In this video, I want to start introducing vocabulary and operations that are unique to matrices that don't have a counterpart when you talk about them for vectors. So the first idea is about the diagonal entries of a matrix. So the diagonal entries in an n by n matrix, uh, let's say A, is given as the I, whose, whose generic entry is AIJ there. The diagonal entries are going to be those entries whose uh, indices are identical. So we want the A11 position, the A22 position, the A33 position. That is all of the numbers of the form AII. These are called the main diagonal of your matrix. And so if we have a matrix, let's say like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, to be very, very creative right there. The main diagonal is going to be those entries right here. Because this right here would be the 1, 1 position. This is the 2, 2 position. And this is the 3, 3 position. So 1, 6, and 11. This would be considered the main diagonal of the matrix. Uh, another another vocabulary term here, if a matrix has as many rows as has columns, so it's an n by n matrix, we say that this is a square matrix. And that's because when you draw it, of course, you're going to have the same number of rows and columns, so it looks like a square. So to take the example we have right here, if I just take off, say, the last column and then draw it again, this is now an example of a square matrix. And then lastly, we're going to introduce a notation here. We're going to say I, I sub N. This is going to denote the N by N matrix whose has I's along the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So as an example of such a thing, if you take I1, this would be the matrix with just, just a 1. And really a 1 by 1 matrix is really indistinguishable from just a scalar. But I do want to mention it here. It is an example of a square matrix. I2 would be the matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. I3 would be the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Like so you can keep on going get the idea. And these, and so the matrix does depend on the subscript I right there. And these are referred to as the identity matrices, the one by one identity, two by two identity, three by three by three identity are illustrated on the screen. We could do four by four, five by five, et cetera, right? Uh, it gets the name the identity matrix because it'll be the multiplicative identity of the matrix op, uh, matrix multiplication, which we will introduce very shortly. Uh, but I do want to mention in general that if you take the matrix I n, this will actually be the sum of E11 plus E22 plus E33 all the way down to E n n, where the, these E these E i j's here are the unit matrices that we introduced in the previous video here. So I keep on talking about it. We finally should get to it. Let's talk about the idea of matrix multiplication. What does it mean to multiply together two matrices? Well, we are capable of multiplying a matrix A by a vector. Um, and it turns out, and since matrices are themselves just sets of vectors, we can actually extend the matrix vector product to form a matrix multiplication, a matrix product. So let's say we have two matrices. A is an M by N matrix, and B is an N by P matrix. Notice here that the number of columns in A is equal to the number of rows in B. In order for a matrix product to be defined, we do have to have this compatibility condition. The number of columns in the first matrix has to equal the number of rows in the second one. But it is not required anything about the rows of A or the columns of B. We need that the, the columns of A has the same number as the rows of B. Now, let's also say that B has the form of the following, where the column vectors are given as B1, B2, all the way up to BP. So now the matrix product A times B. So since B, we know the column vectors, we can express it like this. What we're going to do is we're going to basically think of it the following. We're going to distribute this matrix A onto all of the columns of B, and therefore we define the matrix product A times B as the matrix whose first column is A times B1, whose second column is A times B2, whose third column would be A times B3, all the way up to whose final column, whose pth column, would be A times BP. Now notice this matrix, this product, this gives us a matrix, and this matrix would be an M by P matrix, where M was the number of rows that A has, 
and P with the number of columns that B has. So basically that number N, which was the number in the middle, it kind of cancels out, and so to speak. The way I like to think of it is the following. If you take an M by N matrix and you times it by an N by P matrix, well, if the, if the numbers in the middle are the same, they kind of disappear and you end up with an M by P matrix when you're done. That's the general rule when it comes to matrix multiplication. And to, to clarify that, the fact that we have P many columns should be very clear because we have A times B1, A times B2, all the way up to A times BP. You do this for each column of B, so you're going to get P many column vectors when you're done. But why, why do we have M many rows? Well, that comes back down to this matrix product, the matrix vector product we had done previously, right? So remember how this was defined. This is going to equal the linear combination where you take B11 times uh, the first column of A, A1. Then you're going to take B12 uh, times A2. And then you do this all the way up to B1. Uh, let's see, they, there was N many columns and then AN, like so. So you get this linear combination to expand the, the vector A, B1. You would add these things together. But these are the vectors... These are these vectors right here, A1, A2, up to AN. These are column vectors of A. So how many entries will there be in those vectors? There will be M and many, many entries. So this vector, AB1, would belong to the vector space FM. And that's going to be true for each of these column vectors. And there's P many of them, so we get this M by P matrix. Now, in the case of a square matrix, so A is N by N, then if you have a square matrix, you could actually take A times A. Because you, you, have, you have an n by n times an n by n, that product would be n by n. So you could talk about having an a squared. But you could also talk about a times a times a, which would give you a cubed. Because every time you multiply a by another a, you're still going to be an n by n. And so we can talk about the generalized exponent, the power of a, of a matrix here. So for example, a to the k for some, um, not, from nat for some natural number n. Sorry, natural number k, we can define a to the k, which just means a times a times a times a, and you do it k times. We will also include the definition that a to the 0 is equal to the identity. And this is from the fact that if you take a number and raise it to the 0 power, that's supposed to equal 1, uh, where 1 is the multiplicative identity. We're kind of alluding to the fact that this is going to be our identity matrix, so we're going to use that. Now, we can we, so we define matrix multiplication by extending the vector matrix product we saw before. But another way that we like to define matrix multiplication is sort of the following. Let's not describe it as column vectors. Let's describe it as individual elements. So if you take A times B, what is the, what's a generic entry in that matrix? And what you're going to do is the generic entry, the IJ position, is you're going to take, and so if I can try to make this to make sense, you're going to take the ith row of A, and you're going to multiply it by the jth column of B. And we'll see a specific example of what that means. And that's where we get this thing right here, this AI1 times B1J plus AI2 times B2J plus AI3 times B3J, all the way up to AIN times BNJ. So you take all the possible combinations. So you're going to take the first entry of the you're gonna take the first entry of the first row of a and you're gonna times that by the first entry of the first column of b again this will be much more much more precise in a moment what this formula looks like and this is often referred to as thinking of linear uh, of matrix multiplication as the by the dot product or the inner product something we'll define later in our series i often like to refer to this as the finger multiplication method because again this will be much more clear when we have a specific example so let's, let's actually look at the original definition of matrix multiplication. Then we'll get to this finger multiplication in just a second. So notice that A is a 2 by 3 matrix and B is a 3 by 3 matrix. So this matrix multiplication will be compatible. And we would anticipate that A is going to be a 2 by 3 matrix, grabbing the first number here and the last number right here. So we expect a 2 by 3 matrix. By definition... The three columns of A times B will be A times the three columns of B. So we're going to get this right here times A. We're going to get the second column of B times A, and then the third column of A times third column of B times A, which we see right here. 
Now, if we were to expand these things, what happens exactly? Well, if you take the first one, for example, if we go through the definition of matrix vector product, this should look like nine times, I can't see A anymore. This should look like nine times two zero. Then you're gonna get three times one four. And then you're gonna get negative two times negative one, negative two. For which when you add those things together, you're gonna get an 18 plus three plus two as the first entry. And then for the last, and then for the last entry, you're gonna get zero plus 12 plus four, like you see right here and right here, okay? And so what we're, and so, that, so that's what A times B1 would look like. We would do a similar thing for A times uh, B2 right here. Let's, let's see the original matrix. So we're gonna take negative five times two zero. We're gonna take nine times one four. And we're going to take four times negative one, negative two. And so when you look at those linear combinations, uh, you're going to produce numbers that look like this right here. So notice you got two times negative five over zero times negative five. Then you're going to get one times nine over four times nine. Then you're going to get negative one, uh, excuse me, you're going to get, uh, yeah, negative one times four over negative two times four. So you work this thing out. But a way that kind of simplifies it, I mean, so it is good to think of in terms of linear combinations, but one method that might simplify it a little bit is if you take like the first row of A and you times it by the first column of B and you think of it as like you're running your finger over this row and then you run your finger over this column right here and you multiply together the things that are in corresponding positions. So two times, two times nine, um, you're gonna add that to one times three and then negative one times negative two. So that's how you get the one, one position, the first row times the first column. The next thing is to take the first row times the second column. So you're gonna get running your finger along this one and then down this one, you're gonna get two times negative five, you're gonna get one times nine and you're gonna get negative one times four, like so. That's gonna be the one, two position of A times B. To get the one, three position, you take the first row times the third column. So you're gonna get two times negative three plus one times one, uh, plus negative one times six. That gives you the first row of A times B. Now we're gonna take the second row of A times B, as R of A, and times it by the first column of B. So running your finger along this row and then this column right here, you are gonna get zero times nine plus four times three plus negative two times negative two. Then take the second column times, sorry, the second row times the second column. That'll give you the two, two position. You get zero times negative five, four times nine, and negative two times four, like so. Uh, the next one, then we're gonna take the second row times the third column to get the two, three position. Zero times negative three, four times one, and negative two times six. And so you get all six possibilities by looking at the combinations of two by three, uh, the, the two rows by the three columns of the matrix. Now you simplify these things, of course. So for example, two times nine is 18, one times three is three, negative one times negative two is going to equal uh, positive two. You get 18 plus three plus two, which is equal to 23. That gives you the one, one spot. The one, two spot, you take negative neg two times negative five, which is negative 10, one times nine, which is nine, negative one times four, which is negative four. You add those together, and you're gonna end up with negative five. And you do that for the other remaining positions. I'll let you kind of fill in the rest of the arithmetic. This is how one computes the matrix product between two, mat uh, between two matrices right here. And we can transcend this, right? Because we can add matrices, we can scale matrices, and we can take products of matrices. This means that in certain situations, we can actually evaluate a polynomial out of matrix. Well, we, what do we mean by that? Well, if you have a polynomial, a polynomial will have coefficients. These are just scalars. You're going to have powers of your variable x. So you have to have exponents. You have to be able to multiply your variable by a scalar. So scalar multiplication. And you have to add together these different monomials. That just means addition. So if you have exponents, addition, and scalar multiplication, you can do polynomials. So if you have a square matrix, that is, it's n by n. An n by n matrix, you can take exponents of it like we talked about before. And so that means you could evaluate a, a, a square matrix by a polynomial, P of A. Uh, in which case, for the constant term, you're going to take A0 times the identity. Then you're going to take 
you'll add that to a1 times a plus a2 a squared plus a3 a cubed all the way up to a m times a to the m. And this is an example of a so-called matrix polynomial. It uses scalar multiplication, addition of matrices, and exponents of matrices, which is just matrix multiplication here. So let's take the two by two matrix 4, 2, 0, 3, and we'll say the scalars live over z5. So we're going to reduce mod 5. And let's take the polynomial x squared plus 3a plus 2. So what does it mean to evaluate the polynomial at the matrix A? Well, everywhere we see an x, we're going to replace it with the matrix A. Uh, now, in the, in the terms of the constant position, we have to put the identity because we can't add 2 to a matrix. How do you add 2 to a matrix? Well, we can, we can add 2 times the identity, and that's what we want right there. So let, what does this mean? Okay, A, given right here, 4, 2, 0, 3, we're going to square this matrix. We'll do it in a moment. We have to times a by three, we have to times the identity by two. The scalar multiplication is gonna be pretty easy. If we times everything in, by a by three, we're gonna get three times four, which is 12, which reduces to two mod five. You're then gonna get three times two, which is six, which is congruent to one mod five, three times zero, which is zero, and then three times three, which is nine, that reduces to four mod five. Um, if we times the identity matrix by two, you're going to get 2, 0, 0, 2. No reduction was needed there. Um, how about A squared? How does one do that calculation? What that means is we take the matrix 4, 2, 0, 3, and we're going to multiply it by 4, 2, 0, 3. And so we're going to do our finger multiplication. Take the first row times the first column. Uh, that's going to give us 4 times 4, which is 16. 16 reduces to 1 mod 5. Uh, next, we're going to get uh, plus 0, which that adds up to be a 1. Next, we're going to take four, uh, the first row times the second column. You get 4 times 2, which is 8. 8 is the same thing as 3. And then you're going to get 2 times 3, which is 6, which reduces to 1 mod 4. 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. Next, we're going to take the second, uh, second row of A times the first column of A. You're going to get 0 plus 0. That adds up to be 0. Next, you're going to get 0 plus 9. 9 is the same thing as 4 mod 5, and so therefore you get 4. And that's where this a squared came from. Now, if we add these things together, you're going to get 1 plus 2 plus 2, which is 5, which reduces to 0 mod 5. Next, you're going to get 4 plus 1 plus 0, which is also 5, and thus reduces to 0. Uh, you're going to get 0 plus 0 plus 0, which gives you a 0. And then lastly, you're going to get... 4 plus 4 plus 2, which adds up to be 10, which 10 also reduces down to 0 right here. And so this is, this is how one could evaluate a matrix polynomial. Kind of interesting here, we evaluated this polynomial and got the 0 matrix. So in some regard, you could say that this matrix is the root of this polynomial. Uh, this is a topic we might talk about a little bit more about in the future, but... I want to show you in this example how we can do matrix multiplication and then combining that with addition and scalar multiplication, we can actually evaluate any polynomial expression on a matrix.